What's up everyone, I am Jason C and today I'm starting a new series called Mash and Drum Non-Chill Filtered where every now and then I'll be voicing my opinion on the latest news from the whiskey world and the effect it could have on you and the whiskey itself. So if you haven't heard yet, Colonel E.H. Taylor Single Barrel has won the world's best bourbon at the International Wine and Spirits Competition. First, let's talk about the bourbon quickly and then we will dive into how I think this award will affect the demand and price for this already hard to find bottle. Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr. Single Barrel is part of the Colonel E.H. Taylor Jr. line, which also includes a small batch, barrel proof, and rye offerings released throughout the year, along with limited one-off releases like this year's 18-year marriage, the Four Grain, and Amaranth Grain of the Gods. With the exception of their barrel proof bourbon, all E.H. Taylor whiskeys are bottled in bond. Colonel E.H. Taylor, for who the bourbon is named after, is considered a founding father of the modern bourbon industry. Many of the innovations he crafted in the 19th century are still used today, such as copper fermentation tanks and also heat cycling warehouses. But his crowning achievement was leading the charge for the passage of the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897, which set the standard for trust in bourbon at a time when a lot of counterfeit whiskeys were being made. Now, the E.H. Taylor Single Barrel is 100 proof, Bottled and Bond bourbon using the Buffalo Trace Low Rye Mash Bill, also known as Mash Bill No. 1. Uh, with an MSRP around 70 to 80 bucks. So let's get a pour of this one. All right. I mean, this is pretty, uh, this is pretty typical Buffalo Trace mash bill number one. It's very sweet. It's very vanilla, very caramel, extremely candy on the nose. Man, almost like this cotton candy type aspect to it. This particular single barrel has a really light butterscotch note, which is just really delicious. Definitely baking spices in here. All right, let's get a taste. Here we go, guys. All right, so this single barrel, it's very sweet, very easy. I like that butterscotch note on it. That cotton candy, almost bubble gum note that I was getting on the nose is definitely hitting the palate as well. Good proof point at 100 proof. Got some baking spices on the end, definitely some cinnamon. Little hint of uh, maybe some nutmeg there too. Not a super long finish though. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really sweet. Butterscotch, ton of vanilla cake. Stay with you. Like most Buffalo Trace Mashville one, it's very sweet, it's very easy. I always say Buffalo Trace has this unique ability to pull out really extreme sweet flavors uh, out of their bourbons and their barrels and their uh, their yeast strains and whatever they're doing there um, because you know I think that's why people go so crazy for it um, and this is really solid I really think this adds a, a slight level of complexity to the Colonel Taylor small batch if you've ever had the small batch where they're taking different barrels blending them together for your for a uh, consistent flavor profile the single barrel I think just adds a little bit more age and a little bit more complexity to it now the issue with this, and the reason why I wanted to make this uh, video, is because it just won the world's best bourbon, and once the news travels, and it travels fast, now you want to buy one. So here's what's going to happen to you, and that you need to be aware of when trying to hunt one of these down. So first off, Colonel E.H. Taylor Single Barrel is already hard to find, like most Buffalo Trace products. This isn't a bourbon you're going to be able to walk into a store and just find sitting on the shelf, and that was before it just received this award. So if you're already on the hunt for this bottle, you will have to probably get lucky bourbon hunting, uh, you know, walk into a store where there's actually one sitting on the shelf uh, for some crazy reason, or have a great relationship with your local store owner to actually get your hands on one. Secondly, and the part that's gonna piss me off and probably a lot of you out there, is this is a 70 to $80 bourbon and the price is going to skyrocket in price, both from store owners and from secondary market who want to capitalize on the shiny new award this bourbon just won. I am already starting to see this bourbon going for over $200 and I think it's just <laughs> Forbes magazine who posted the article about this big win said that this bourbon is still a bargain at $235 which is not only an uneducated and irresponsible thing to write but also adds to the price gouging and demand for this bourbon. Articles like this keep these bourbons as ultra luxury offerings when in reality, at best, this bourbon to me isn't worth more than about a hundred bucks. All right, so why don't I think this is worth more than a hundred bucks? Okay, so first thing, it's non-age stated. There's no age on the bottle to tell you how old it is. Uh, supposedly, they could be anywhere from seven to 12 years old in this bottle. 
Um, maybe if you slapped an age statement on there and I knew that I was getting a 10 year old or a 12 year old bourbon for that amount of money for 100, 150, maybe up to 200, maybe I could be a little bit more on board with you know that type of price increase. Next up, it's a single barrel. I mean, each unique barrel is bottled and could be different than the single barrel right next to it. E.H. Taylor doesn't label any barrel information, either like Henry McKenna here, which will actually show the, the barrel number, uh, the barrel date. Uh, on some single barrels, it'll actually give you the rick information, exactly where the barrel was sitting, which I think is pretty cool. But none of that is present on the label for Colonel E.H. Taylor's single barrel. Now, I would bet anything that at the International Wine and Spirits competition, they got themselves a wonderful honey barrel that tasted amazing. But we will never know what barrel that is, and chances are, even though I do think Colonel Taylor single barrel is pretty consistent for a single barrel offering, chances are the one you pay for or overpay for will not be the same one that they tried at that International Spirits competition. So all in all, don't listen to that Forbes magazine article where it says at 235 bucks, this is still a bargain. I'm taking another sip right now. Again, it's very sweet. It's very easy to sip, very delicious. Not a lot going on in the finish. This is not a, a, a bourbon worth over $200. I don't think it's worth over $100, like I said. So don't listen to that Forbes magazine article and don't pay exorbitant prices from the secondary market or store owners who will take a bourbon that's not worth more than 100 bucks in my opinion and drive to prices over $200. Remember, the MSRP on this bottle is about 80 bucks and because it won an award, it doesn't mean you should pay the prices that are set by that think they know what the value is based on an award and public demand rather than what's in the bottle. I'm all for people trying to make money, but when there are so many options these days for great whiskey and bourbons, there's a fine line between making money and just pure greed. Now, if you're interested in single barrel bourbons that are price fair and available without paying the exorbitant prices that the Colonel Taylor single barrel is sure to go up to, Check out Russell's Reserve Single Barrel from Wild Turkey. These are 110 proof, they are non-chill filtered, and about eight to nine years old for about 60 bucks. So a lot of flavor, a lot of complexity, non-chill filtered, it's really oily. Uh, you can find some barrel picks at your local stores, or if you know anybody that does certain barrel picks or store picks as well, just some fantastic stuff coming out of Wild Turkey. All right, next up is Knob Creek Single Barrel from Jim Beam. These are 120 proof, they are nine years old, about 45 to 50 bucks and available everywhere. This is one of the best values on the market. It's available. Uh, you can look for some store picks as well, just like the Russell's Reserve. Sometimes they can get up as high as 14, 15 years old, like this one. Um, so you think about it for a bourbon that's maybe 14 to 15 years old, usually you see those in upwards of $200 or more, whereas these are about 45, 50 bucks if you could find them. Absolute bargain from Jim Beam. Next up is Baker Single Barrel, which is 107 proof. These can be about seven to nine years old and they're only about 60 bucks. Uh, unlike the Colonel Taylor Single Barrel, this gives you all the information you need right here on the neck tag. This gives you the date it was barreled, the barrel age. This one is seven years and nine months, but I have seen ones that are close to nine years old. Uh, this gives you the Rick House number. It gives you the serial number, all the great information you need. Uh, this was a redesign pretty recently from Jim Beam. This was a small batch originally. It went to single barrel. Now there's a chance for you to get a really good one that's a little bit higher in age than what the label suggests. Just another great offering. Lastly, we have a couple of craft distilleries like New Riff and Wilderness Trail offering affordable single barrels for about 50 to 60 bucks. Now, these might not be as old as some of the ones I mentioned when it comes to age in the bottle, but they definitely taste that way. They're non-chill filtered, which gives them a little bit of a creamier mouthfeel. They're about 100 proof. I think this one is, this one's 112 proof, so a little bit higher than the Colonel Taylor, but still offering a lot of different flavors. Uh, at affordable prices instead of you going out and chasing down a Colonel Taylor single barrel, which you either will not find or if you do find it, someone's going to charge you out the ass for it. All right, guys, well, hope you enjoyed the first episode of Mash and Drum Non-Chill Filtered as I got to vent some of my frustrations here about the uh, Colonel Taylor single barrel winning the award and already the price increases that are going to be going on with it. And I'm sure we're going to see it continue uh, throughout the rest of the year as people try to hunt one down, a bottle that was already hard to get. 
Uh, if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Let me know what you think. If you've seen prices go up on this, if you've already never seen this bottle, if you've never seen one in person, always like to hear your guys' thoughts and your opinions as well. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. So cheers. And uh, I feel better. This is therapeutic, right? All right. Cheers, guys. See you next time.